Hi there, welcome back to the fifth part of this video tutorial series about remaking an old model, an Urukai, to be more precise. This time we'll be modeling the armor and clothes for our character. We'll be using cloud simulation, curve guides, solidify and boolean modifiers. Ok, I'm gonna start by adding a cylinder to make the shoulder plate. I delete the lower faces and rotate the mesh a little. Ok. I'm gonna use the proportional editing option a lot to maintain the mesh volume will, uh, while deforming its shape. Now I need to subdivide the shape a couple of times. I move and rotate the loops to create the desired shape. Rotate again. We can return to solid view mode now. And keep adjusting the loops. There. Oops. And now I use the bevel tool on the two central loops. The menu that pops up is the dynamic spacebar menu. This add-on is quite handy and it's included in uh, Blender by default. Um, but you, you just need to find it in the preference menu and activate it. And now I'm using the solidify modifier to give it thickness. After that I duplicate the object to make a second shoulder, shoulder plate. I'm using the proportional editing mode, it's like the sculpting uh, mode. You move one vertex and the one uh, within a radius will follow. And you can make the radius bigger or smaller and adjust the fall of curve too. Another, another really useful add-on is the loop tools. It's also not enabled by default, so you'll have to find it and activate it. I'm using the relax operation to make the edge loops more smooth. To make the shape more like a, like a regular grid. I'm gonna use the bevel operation again. And, and again. You'll see why right now. I'm gonna repeat the steps on the second model. using the exact same values for the bevel. I need to extrude the face loop to make a rim. And repeat the operation for the second object. I'm using the same values for both objects in bevel and extrude. From now on I think, I think I, it would be better if I just join the two objects into one. I use mostly bevel and extrude to create these shapes. More bevel. Let's, uh, let's test the model with the edge split modifier. Ok, let's duplicate it to make the right shoulder plate. Having the 3D cursor as the pivot point and the 3D cursor in the center of the scene, I can click Ctrl M to enter interactive mirror mode. 
then X to use the X axis, and finally confirm by pressing Enter. Ok, let's make the clothes. I'm gonna model a really simple neckband plane. And when I finish it, I'll add a cloud simulation to it and a collision seam to the character's head. So the neckband adapts its uh, shape to the character's topology. Okay, ready to start the sim. Here we go. Excellent. Now I can use the solidify modifier to give it thickness. I need to adjust the thickness a little. This is kind of a shirt, so I'm giving it a rim to simulate the stitching in the neck area. Later, I'm gonna add that subdivision modifier, giving it a softer look. Need to make some bellows there. I'm turning on ambient occlusion in the viewport so it helps a lot to see the shapes let's make some other parts for the shoulders I'm gonna use the snap option to make the new vertices stick to the available surface Yes. Oops. This, uh, the new geometry is projected into the existing mesh. It gets a little difficult to select the faces now. Now Extrude the faces a couple of times and then we will use the spin operation to join them again. I want to add some uh, chains to this armor, so I need to add a torus object to create the rings for the chains. Not dating. Um, okay. Okay, now. Now I'm making the leather straps for the shoulder plates. I'm using the snap to closest face option to project the new vertices on the surface of other objects. Okay, let's add a mirror modifier. By using the mirror modifier I can make both straps at the same time. Then I can apply the modifier and start doing asymmetric details. Feels like this. Okay. Um, I need to cut the left strap to add a buckle. Uh, 
暗的刺。I'm gonna add some bevel to these straps. There, and check how it looks with the subdivision modifier. Got to adjust that a little. Okay, those shoulders definitely need some spikes. I'm making one spike and duplicate it several times. After placing each spike in the desired location, I need to adjust the base. Duplicate another, see, duplicate, resize, rotate, and adjust. Easy. Just a little. To create the chains, I just make uh, one link and a curve guide, adding an array modifier with the option to fill the curve, and then a curve modifier makes the chain almost done. But we need to, the links to rotate, so we need to add an object offset. That is an object which uh, transformation affects the rotation and size of the chain. In this case, as we rotate this object, which is an empty the links will start rotating too. So the links look like they are actually joined together. I'm gonna duplicate the, sh the chain link, the curve guide and the empty for the offset. I'm using the cursor to select and snap to cursor options in the dynamic spacebar menu. That's a very quick way to place the objects instead of manually tipping the coordinates. It's typing, not tipping. Duh. Okay, there's uh, our armor finished, at least the modeling part. I'm gonna hide everything but the armor so we can get a closer uh, look at it. There's a lot of geometry generated with modifiers. Chains, ropes, necklace, the clothes. A lot of uh, curve guides there. And this Boolean modifiers to extract parts of the cloth so it looks like old and torn apart. It has a mirror modifier, a solidify modifier too, subdivision and Boolean modifiers. Oops, looks like some parts are in the wrong layer. Gotta fix that in a second. So that's all for now. I hope you all liked this video. Uh, in the next one we'll be making some nice textures and shaders for the armor. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.